Hey, what's going on guys? Austin here for Plague and Outdoorsman again. Uh, doing something a little bit different today. Uh, I might get into more of this stuff uh, in the future, we'll see. But, um, <clears throat> haven't really been uh, too busy lately with uh, going out fishing and whatnot, so just kind of changing it up today. I'm going to be doing a pistol review of the CZ-75B. Uh, just give you my overall thoughts and opinions about it. Uh, so I guess we're going to pretty much get right into it. So this is unloaded. Nothing in there. So, uh, so we were out at the range recently and I brought, obviously brought this with me. I decided, hey, might as well do a review of this. So <clears throat> here we are. Uh, I really like this gun. Uh, really big fan. Fits really well in the hand. Uh, and you can take these grips off and replace them with different ones, but I really don't see any need for that unless you want something a little bit thinner. But this fits my hand just perfectly. So I'm going to keep these ones on there. And <clears throat> size wise, this is comparable to a GI. Uh, government issue 1911. It's uh, a little bit shorter on the slide, a little bit wider on the grip here, uh, due to it being a double stack pistol, whereas a 1911 is only a single stack. Uh, but other than that, they're kind of the same size. I mean, they're both full size handguns, so they're going to be uh, similar size anyway. So I've shot probably, I don't know, uh, a few hundred rounds through this thing. Uh, never had a malfunction yet, um, <clears throat> which I mean, I, I don't really expect to have a malfunction with a gun like this. This is one of the most, if not the most, uh, copied gun in the world, CZ-75, and it's used by military and law enforcement all across the globe. So with a history like that, you don't expect to have, you know, malfunctions all the time. Um, so I guess I'll show you guys how to take it apart and what the inside internals look like. So right, this is going to be kind of hard to see on the camera, but first thing you got to do, cock the hammer. And then there's these two grooves, one on the slide and one on the frame. You have to line those up, and then you're going to push out your slide release here, slide release, here, push it out from this side. Usually I just take my bottom of my mag and just give that a little tap, and then I'm going to, you can see there, it's out a little bit, so I'm going to take this little lip right here and just pull it out the rest of the way. Pull it up and pull your trigger, drop your hammer, take your slide off, and you got your uh, spring and guide rod there, and your barrel, and your frame. So, one thing I do really like about this uh, particular handgun is it has the three dot night sights on it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the three dot sights and especially night sights are really nice, a uh, really nice thing to have. Um, and also another thing that's uh, different about this uh, gun than most other ones is that the slide actually goes inside the frame, whereas generally with most other handguns, the slide actually rides on top of the frame, outside of it. So <clears throat> that apparently makes it more accurate. I don't know whether that's true or not. This does seem to be a fairly accurate uh, pistol, so I mean, there must be some, some bit of truth to that. So I'm going to reassemble this here, barrel in, and get her up. back on and pull the 
hammer back again. Slide release back in there. And then another thing I do like about this is uh, reminds me of a 1911 is that you can carry it either. Well, you can't carry a 1911 with the hammer down, but this you can either <clears throat> carry it with the hammer down like this, or you can carry it safety on cocked and locked like a 1911 uh, which I prefer to do because uh, you're gonna have the same uh, trigger pull every time speaking of trigger pull this is a pretty nice trigger pull I would say let's see I'll give you guys a good angle so uh, there's a little bit of creep here not too much but once you hit that wall little bit more and then a good break there uh, that's in single action obviously and then double action trigger uh, a little bit of take up there at the beginning and you can feel it hit right there at like quarter cock there and then you hit a wall there and it's a good good clean break so <clears throat> pretty good trigger uh, not not the best, but uh, certainly one of the better ones uh, out there. Better stock triggers, I should say. Um, so yeah, and then let's see. So normally, like I'll carry this gun uh, concealed in the winter and whatnot when I'm able to wear a jacket, because this is, like I said, full size handgun. Not the easiest of things to conceal, while I'm not overly concerned with printing or anything, um, you know, it's nice, uh, the more concealed the better, in my opinion. <clears throat> so, this is the holster I would usually use with this. Uh, this is an Alien Gear holster, I don't know the exact, uh, like, model, I guess you would say, of it, but fits in there real nice. Got the Kydex, uh, shell there, it's not gonna come out. Uh, and it's got the two loops here to go right on your belt. Fits right nice against your body. Um, it's you know, easy draw, not hard to pull out of there. And you can also to adjust these to adjust your cant to uh, you know whatever angle you want to uh, have the gun at. You can just take these out, pull right out, and then you just put it back in pretty easy there and then uh, let's see the ammo I usually use when I'm carrying this is the let's see the box right here Browning X point personal defense uh, nine millimeter obviously uh, 147 grain hollow point there's a box um, shot a decent amount of these uh, through here to make sure you know I wasn't gonna get any hang-ups or anything with hollow points um, <clears throat> and like I said before I never had a problem uh, with you know failures to feed or any, any sort of hang-ups at all this gun has absolutely ran flawlessly which is you know obviously great uh, so yeah this is I, I do really like this gun really like carrying it especially you know, shooting it, it just feels great in your hand. Like, once you pick this up, if you pick one of these up, you're going to want to buy it. That's that's how good this feels. Uh, and then another thing, obviously, uh, this does not have a rail for uh, any sort of, like, flashlight or laser or whatever. Which, I mean, I, I don't really care for having a rail up here. I just personal preference I don't really like the way it looks and I also would not have a flashlight on here I mean I don't really see too much of a need for a flashlight actually mounted on your handgun when you could just carry a small one with you so I mean to each their own I guess <clears throat> but uh, just taking a look at this again here you got your 
and I know how to show the safety, but you got your slide release here and then your mag release right here. Again, never had a problem with mags sticking in, they don't fall right out. Uh, no problem, they shoot right out of there. Um, <clears throat> what else? Uh, I think there was one other thing that I was going to mention. Uh, you do have some slight serrations up here in front of the trigger guard, which, I mean, I don't really see any point for that, but they're there. <clears throat> and then, oh yeah, this is a fairly uh, heavy, heavy handgun, with it being all steel. Uh, obviously, it's going to have some weight to it. Uh, not quite as heavy as a 1911, but in that ballpark, again, like I was talking about with the size before, relatively close. So I don't know the exact numbers, but I know they're somewhere in uh, the same range. This is probably, uh, weight-wise, more comparable to an officer, or not an officer, uh, the Commander version 1911, since this has... Uh, isn't quite as big as the GI model, <clears throat> but, I mean, they're close. And another thing about all-steel guns, I do prefer the all-steel over, like, a Glock uh, polymer handgun, which, I mean, there's nothing wrong with a uh, polymer handgun. Uh, it's just that I prefer steel, just a personal preference thing. Um, yeah, I mean, or at least aluminum. Like an aluminum frame I would be fine with as well, as long as the, uh, it's got the steel barrel and slide and everything. So, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video of the CZ-75B. Uh, CZ-75B, by the way, not, uh, the D, so this one does not have the decocker. Which, I mean, it would be kind of nice to have the decocker. Uh, just in case for some reason you have to drop the hammer on a live round, which, I mean, you shouldn't really have to, but if you have the decocker, you can just, you know, just drop the hammer for you and there'd be no problem with it, uh, going off, like, say, if your finger, if you're doing it, your finger slipped like that, that round would obviously go off, so you should always unload it before you're doing something like that, but if you're in a situation where you have to, I don't exactly know what that situation would be, but <clears throat> if you're in that situation, uh, just, I don't know, be extra careful, I guess. I mean, I've done it before, but I didn't really need to, so, uh, and I always had the muzzle point in safe direction, so there was no real threat of anything bad happening if it did go off, my finger slipped, so that, that, this time is going to wrap it up, uh, for the CZ-75B. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe uh, for more videos. Let me get, uh, let me know if you guys like this style of video, because I'm going to be doing at least a couple more of these in the future, uh, probably coming up here pretty soon. Uh, and then, you know, more fishing videos, and uh, I'll be back doing some other stuff as well. So just kind of see what happens in the coming weeks but we will uh, see you on the next video uh, thank you for watching